Number four, anytime a train is moving, either slowly or very fast, there is a part of the train which is actually moving backwards with respect to the ground. My question to you is, which part is it? I want to make a video response to this Veritasium clip because it's a really interesting and counterintuitive problem to have. Because if you have a train on the train tracks going forwards, then what part of it could possibly be going backwards with respect to the ground? I mean, you could think to yourself that perhaps it's a, a piston or something working horizontally that when it's on its back uh, stroke that it's going faster than it's traveling forwards and then maybe something along those lines or maybe something else in the deep bowels of the mechanics of a train that's causing it to, to look like it's going backwards with respect to the ground. But nothing that can be continually going backwards until you look at the wheels. Now, the wheels of a train are different to standard wheels. Uh, you have the wheel that runs along the train track itself, but uh, a train wants to keep on its tracks without jumping off its tracks. So in order to do that, uh, you need to have this lip uh, on, on the side which uh, holds the train steady along those train tracks. And that lip uh, is larger than the the radius and circumference of the, the driven and driving wheels. When a train is moving forwards, the wheel, unless it's continually slipping, is essentially static with regards to the rail. So as it rotates, a point comes in, in contact with the rail and then it lifts off and it's continually rolling forward. But because the lip has a larger circumference, it has to travel a larger distance with one revolution. And what the result is, is that the bottom of that lip looks like it's moving backwards with respect to the ground. So in order to demonstrate this, I've created my own simulated wheel. So here it is. So inside, this is the wheel component which runs on the rail, and this is the guiding lip that uh, runs against the rail, so it keeps the train on track. Um, to show it clearly what I've done is I've put some markings on the top um, when the inner circle here represents what the wheel is on the other side so anything inside that circle is within uh, above the rail and anything outside that circle is below the rail and I've created a little rig here that you can see will help demonstrate it a little bit more clearly so here you can see that the circle represents where the wheel is and it just touches where that wood reference is uh, and then anything below that uh, it represents the lip that's outside of the, the wheel that runs on the, uh, on the rail. Uh, and hopefully when I roll this forwards you should be able to see what part of the wheel is moving backwards with respect to the ground. So let's give it a go. So let's move our train forwards and see what happens. So did you catch that? If we do it again, if you keep an eye on these reference lines and then look at the lines above uh, in, within the circle, these straight lines will never move backwards with respect to these lines, but the ones below will. So they will start out uh, in front of one of these lines and then move behind it. So you can see here we go move. Now the top ones plants its foot here, it stays there, and then lifts up. Alright, so once again, new line comes in, stops here, and then lifts up. Doesn't ever move back, it's in contact with the rail. Now if we go underneath, and we have a look at uh, down here, so we say, okay, this one contacts here, but it's moving backwards with respect to my finger. So when I get to the point it reaches, it's moved all the way backwards to here. And so this is continually moving backwards while the train is moving forwards.